All right, so now we're going to be looking at solving word problems using a system of linear relations. So we spent some time already talking about um, the types of solutions, solving using substitution and elimination. I'll link that in the top right if you uh, need help with any of those topics or haven't seen the videos. Uh, now we're going to be looking at, okay, you're given a word problem. How do you express that as a system of linear relations and then obviously eventually solve? So first question here, let's take a look. Um, we've got here a coin box of a vending machine contains $6.20 in dimes and quarters. Uh, there's 32 dimes in total. How many of each kind are there? Okay, so the key with these problems here is to realize the last sentence, right? The last sentence they give you, this tells you what variables you have to introduce. We're not always going to be using X's and Y's. Uh, in this case here, it says how many of each kind are there? Well, I'm going to let um, D equal the number of dimes, and then I'm going to let Q equal the number of quarters. So it's number of. All right, so how do I translate these sentences to equations? Well, here's what I know. I know I'm doing a linear system of equations. I'm going to have two linear equations. So I'm going to have two sentences I have to change here. So my first sentence says, uh, the coin box contains $6.20 in dimes and quarters. Well, if you notice here, if I take 0 0.10 times D plus 0.25 times Q, that would have to equal $6.20. The reason for that is D represents the number of dimes. So if I have 5 dimes, 10 dimes, 20 dimes, each one is worth 10 cents. So 0.10 times the number of dimes would be the amount of money um, we have in dimes. A lot of times students want to put D plus Q is 620. That would be incorrect. D is the number of dimes. Q is the number of quarters. So by taking the amount you have times the price per, you'll get the value, the amount of money you have in dimes. And then this is the amount of money I have in quarters. Obviously, summing them together, we have our $6.20. For the second equation, it says there were 32 coins in all. So that means if I take the number of dimes plus the number of quarters in my hand, the number of coins I have sums to be 32. So now we have um, our system of linear equations created, right? I have two equations and two unknowns. Now in this situation here, you can solve it however you want. Um, I'm going to do substitution for this. So uh, therefore, D is going to equal 32 minus Q. And I'm going to sub uh, this into equation one. So everywhere I see a D, I am now going to change that to a 32 minus Q. Right, so now we go ahead and do our distribution on this. So this becomes 3.2 minus 0 0.10 Q plus 0.25 Q is $6.20. This is 0.15Q is 6.20 minus 3.20. 0.15Q is $3. And then 3 divided by 0.15, the number of quarters we have, right? Q stands for number of quarters, is 20. So therefore, if it sums to be, um, if it's summing to be equal to 32, I must have 12 dimes. Again, you could get that value just by subbing it back into your equation. I could have taken this 20, subbed into my first equation, or my second. Obviously, subbing into your second is a lot easier. And we have our answer here. So from here, we know that, uh, therefore, we have 20 quarters and 12 dimes. All right, let's take a look at the next example. So for the next example here, all right, if you take a look at the next example, there we go, sorry about that. <coughs> uh, we have two numbers, two numbers differ by five. So I have two numbers, their difference is five. Now it says here that, um, Four times the smaller number is five less than three times the larger number. Find the numbers. So right away, what, the, what they ask you to find here, find the numbers, that gives me the variables I have to introduce. So I'm going to let S equal the smaller number. 
and we'll let L equal the larger number. Okay, so that makes seems pretty obvious, right? Again, you always go to that last sentence. That last sentence will tell you what variables you introduce. Now that I have my variables, I know I need two equations. Okay, so if I need two equations here, let's see. Two numbers differ by 5. So if two numbers differ by 5, I'm, I know that the larger number minus the smaller number must equal 5. Now notice here, you can't do S minus L equals 5 because that, that would be obviously result in a negative number. So I wanted to keep uh, the difference being positive 5, so I took the larger number minus the smaller number. Now it says 4 times the smaller, so I'm going to go 4s. Is, in math, if you see the word is, that's essentially just an equal sign. 5 less than 3 times the larger. Well, if I take 5 less, right, 5 less than 3 times the larger. So now we have our second equation. So again here, now we have two equations, two unknowns we can solve. Um, I can go ahead and do substitution. So therefore, I know L is 5 plus S. So therefore, everywhere I see an L, I can change it to a 5 plus S. And solving this here, you get 15 plus 3S minus 5. S is 10. You go ahead and solve this here you end up getting that s is 10. so if, so for here if i know s is 10 therefore i can sub uh, s is 10 into equation one or two i'm going to choose equation one because it's nicer you'll get l minus 10 is 5 in which case l is 15. so the two numbers that they gave us here let me write this up here the two numbers they gave us here are 15 and 10. Therefore, 15 and 10 are the two numbers. Okay, there's example two. All right, so moving on to example three here, we have a tennis club charges an annual fee and an hourly fee. So there's two charges going on here. Uh, one year, Tony played for 39 hours and costed him $384. Sandra played for 51 hours, and that costed $456. Find the annual fee and hourly fee. So again, in the question, they introduce those variables to you, what they want you to find. So I'm going to let uh, A equal the annual fee, and then I will let uh, H equal the hourly, the hourly fee here. So again, we have to create two equations. So I know from the question, I know that uh, Tony played for 39 hours and then paid $384. So I know that if I take 39 times H, H being the annual fee, or sorry, H being the hourly fee, then 39 hours times the hourly fee, whatever it is, maybe it's $20 an hour, maybe it's $15 an hour, maybe it's 10 I don't really know. We want to find that out. By multiplying those two together, that's going to be the amount of money that Tony paid this club for the hourly fee, plus there's like a fixed annual fee cost. And I know that whole sum came out to $384. Likewise, we have Sandra. She played more. So she was going at 51 hours. So 51 times 8 would be the amount of money she paid this tennis club. Plus, there's that same fixed annual fee, and that came out to five, 456. So now I know I have two equations, two unknowns, and I can solve. Uh, we can solve this however we want. Let's try to do this using elimination here. The reason I'm choosing elimination is these two coefficients are the same. So I can just subtract these two equations. Um, if I subtract this column-wise, we'll have 39 minus 51. So 39h minus 51h is negative 12h. The a's cancel. And then if you take 384 and subtract that from 456, you get negative 72. Uh, divide across by negative 12, and you'll actually find out that the hourly fee, <coughs> the hourly fee here uh, was $6. Okay, so now we can sub it into either equation and you can solve for the annual fee. So I'll sub it into 1.
in uh, solving for a here, we get 384 minus 39 times 6. And you'll, you'll end up getting 150 annual dollars of an annual fee. So this tennis club is charging a fixed fee of $150 plus $6 per hour that you play. Right? And this would be example three. All right, moving on to example four here. We have Naomi invested $1,000. All right, uh, part of it is invested at 8% and the rest of it invested at 9%. They use the term per annum. This term here, uh, per annum, just so you guys are aware, just means per year. So after an entire year of investing, uh, one investment yielded 8% return, the other yielded a 10% return. So now what, what do we know here? We know in one year, the two parts earned equal amounts. Okay, so in one year, uh, the, the two investments earned equal amounts of interest. How much did she invest at each rate? So uh, in this question here, how much did she invest at each rate? That's going to tell us the variables to introduce. So visually what's going on here is Naomi has $1,000. Part is being invested and returns 8%. Another part is being invested and that return is 10%. Um, I'm going to let X be the amount invested at 8% and let Y be the amount invested at 10%. Well, what do I know? I know she has $1,000 in total to invest, so I know the sum of the amount of money invested at 8% and the amount of money invested at 10% must sum to 1,000, so that's obvious. Now, the second equation people usually have trouble with here, it says um, the two parts earned equal amounts of interest. You do not just set X equal to Y because if I put X equal to Y, that's just saying the amount of money I invested in each are the same, making these $500 each. That's not the case. You want to talk about the interest made. Well, 0 0.08 times X, that would represent the amount of interest I made in my investment, right? Because you're going to take 8% interest times how much was invested is going to be the amount of money you made. Likewise, if I put 0 0.10 times Y, that'll represent the amount of money I made in the 10% investment. All right, so now that we have that here, uh, we're going to isolate. So in this case, x is 1,000 minus y. And then I'm going to sub that into. So I'm going to sub that into 2. And we get 0 0.08 times 1,000 minus y is 0 0.10y. Um, and then continuing this on here, you're going to, going to get 80. Right? If we do distribution on this, minus 0 0.08 y is 0 0.10 y. And now we get 80 is 0 0.18 y. And let's kind of go up here, divide this out. You end up getting uh, 80 divided by, if you take 80 and divide that by 0 0.818, you get $444.44. So that represents the amount of money invested in the 10% investment, all right? Now, how much is in the other one? Well, it has to sum to be 1,000. So if it has to sum to be 1,000 here, we take 1,000 minus $444.44, and in which case uh, you end up getting $556.50. And in this case here, this is the amount of money invested at 8%. So $556.56 was invested at 8% and $444.44 was invested at the 10% interest rate. All right, that concludes the video. Uh, these are four examples of converting your equations, or sorry, your sentences to equations and then solving this using a system of linear equations. Thank you.